Hello and welcome to video one for week one. A major theme in calculus three was the extension of the derivative to multivariable situations, to parametric curves, and to scalar fields. We're going to start this course, calculus four, with the extension of the integral. I'm not going to look into the integrals of parametric curves. We actually already did a little bit of integration with parametric curves when we did arc length calculation. That's about as far as we can go with integration and parametric curves using the ideas of the calculus. But I want to talk about the integration for scalar fields. And I want to say, what does it mean to extend the integral to scalar fields, so functions of multiple variables that still have a single output, scalar output? I want to start with the indefinite integral. So for single variable functions, the indefinite integral gave us an antiderivative. So the indefinite integral of little f was some capital F, where capital F was some function whose derivative was little f. What does that mean for the antiderivative, the indefinite integral of a function, say, of three variables? How would this work? By itself, this is not really a thing that works. One of the things we discovered in Calculus 3 in the latter half of that course was that there wasn't any single version of the derivative that really captured all of the flavor of the derivative from single variable calculus. We extended the derivative in a bunch of different ways. There are partial derivatives and gradients, and linear approximations and slopes of tangent planes and tangent hyperplanes. And all of these were sort of pieces of the original derivative idea, but there wasn't one single thing that was the derivative for a scalar field. So there's likewise no single thing that is an antiderivative. There's no single idea that we can say, oh, this is the antiderivative of a scalar field. So this thing by itself, if you want something holistic, well, then you're not going to have it. However, there is something that sort of is a version of what we did for partial differentiation. We can take an antiderivative in some particular variable, pretending that the other variables are constant. Very much like we do with partial derivatives, we pretended partial derivatives were constant and we took different derivatives. Here, if I want to differentiate an x, I'll pretend that y and z are constant. If I want to differentiate in y, I'll pretend that x and z are constant. If I want to differentiate in z, I'll pretend that x and y are constant. And that still makes sense. Sort of the counterpart to partial derivatives is this integration in a single variable. That's as far as I'm going to go really with the indefinite integral. But I want to talk about one of the themes that I want to build up for this course. So now that we're extending both integrals and derivatives, these things are related for single variable functions by the fundamental theorem of calculus. And I've given you here four versions of what the fundamental theorem of calculus could be, depending how you choose to write it. You could say that the definite integral of a function is a valuation of its antiderivative, or the definite integral of a derivative is the valuation of the function. Indefinite versions of those as well. Lots of different ways to write the fundamental theorem. The fundamental theorem, even though derivatives and integrals don't extend clearly in one simple way, is still going to be a major theme of this course, and we're going to see a whole pile of variations of it. So I want to keep coming back to that theme, starting from this video and going throughout the entire part of the course. Many of the most important results of this course are going to be versions, things that have the flavor of the fundamental theorem. For now, all that I can say is that this partial derivative and this partial integration, we don't call it partial integration, we just call it integration one variable, I guess. These things are still inverse to each other. These are essentially single variable things. I'm pretending that y and z are constants. So this is just basically a single variable thing. It satisfies the conventional single variable fundamental theorem. So if I take a derivative and an integral, well, I get the original function back. The only difference now is that the constants of integration, since I pretended that y and z were constant, well, they can show up as constants of integration. So anytime you do one of these single variable antiderivatives, you have to be aware that the constants of integration can include the other variables. So likewise, if I integrate and differentiate in y, I get the original function back, but the constants of integration can involve x and z. And here, if I integrate in z, the constants of integration can involve x and y. That's as far as I want to go with indefinite integrals. There's not much more to say about them in extension. We're going to move on to definite integrals, and that's going to be the basis for much of the rest of the course as we try and define what we're integrating over, what kind of functions we're integrating over those objects, what the definite integral means for scalar fields.